Okay, this lecture is going to cover accounting changes and error analysis. A little background first. Uh, first of all, there are three types of accounting changes. Uh, the first is a change in accounting principle, for example, changing from LIFO to FIFO. The second is a change in accounting estimate. This would be something like extending the useful life on property, plant, and equipment. Uh, and then finally, there is a change in reporting and en reporting entity, which is a, basically a reorganization of the firm uh, when it has subsidiaries. There are also accounting errors. Uh, accounting errors are intentional or unintentional misstatements of financial information or the misapplication of accounting rules. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about changes in accounting principles. We're going to talk about each one in a little more detail. Uh, first of all, there are three possible approaches to reporting these types of changes or changes in general. Uh, one is currently, report changes currently, which is basically the cumulative effect is reported in the current year's income statement and the company does not restate prior years. Another option is to report changes retrospectively, which basically means we recast previous financial statements as if the new principle had always been used. The firm restates all presented financial statements and adjusts the earliest retained earnings to capture any earlier effects. And then finally, there's prospectively, which basically means we apply the new standard going forward, but there's no changes to any balances or financial accounts. And so when we talk about changes in accounting principle, we choose the retrospective approach. In other words, we'll recast previous financial statements as if the new principle had always been used and we'll restate all presented financial statements and adjust the earliest retained earnings to capture earlier effects. All right, there are two primary steps when we are applying these changes retrospectively. Uh, first of all, we have to adjust financial statements for all years that are presented. And then we have to adjust carrying amounts of assets and liabilities as of the beginning of the first year presented. Retained earnings is adjusted for any cumulative effect on income prior to the first year that's presented. We also have to disclose the change in the accounting principle. More specifically, we have to disclose the nature and the reason for the change. And we have to disclose the method for applying the change. And we have to describe if there's prior period information that has been retro retrospectively adjusted, the effect or, um, of the change on, on income and also any cumulative effect of the change on retained earnings, other equity accounts, or net assets on the balance sheet. So the disclosures uh, can be quite um, extensive. All right, let's talk about an example here. So 49er Company started operations on January 1st, 2015, and they used the LIFO method for inventory accounting all the way through 2017, and the following are income statements as they were reported each year from 2015 all the way through 2017. Notice I just separate cost of goods sold because that's going to deal with our inventory and all their other expenses are, are lumped together. We also have the following reported as part of the balance sheets. And so we have our 2015, 2016, and 2017 balance sheets. Notice again here I separated inventory and then sort of lumped everything else together. I also separated retained earnings from all the other equity accounts uh, because if, the, if there's a change in cost of goods sold, there's going to be a change in income. If there's a change in income, there's going to be a change in retained earnings. And so I'm just separating them out so we can kind of see the effects. All right, so let's uh, continue this example. So on January 1st, 2018, 49er company begins using the FIFO method rather than LIFO. The change decreases cost of goods sold each year by 10%, provide any necessary journal entries, and also present 49ers uh, income statements and balance sheet as they would be presented on December 31st, 2018. And so we'll provide the 2018 financial statements, but part of this problem is to understand what else has to be presented on December 31st, 2018. And for this problem, we're going to ignore the income tax effects, but the, for the second problem we do, we're actually going to, going to include them. All right, so first of all, the journal entry. Uh, the LIFO cumulative income was $40,000, and that's using the 1231-2017 balance in our retained earnings account. The cumulative change to cost of goods sold uh, under LIFO, the total cost of goods sold was 92000 And we were told that under FIFO, it would be 10% less. And if we just take 10% less of each of the years, 2015 through 2017, we would total $82,800, which, which is um, less than um, FIFO cost of goods sold by $9,200.
So the change in cost of goods sold is 9200 or 10% lower. So the FIFO cumulative income after being adjusted for cost of goods sold for the lower cost of goods sold would be 49200 rather than 40000 All right, so the next thing is to just make the cumulative adjustment to retained earnings. And of course, the other side of that adjustment is going to be to our inventory account. And so retained earnings gets credited for $9,200, of course, because income is higher under FIFO. And at the same time, our inventory balance is going to be higher by $9,200 as well. And so then we have to recast our financial statements. And so in 2018, we'd have to report three years of income. And so 2016, 2017, 2018. But you notice in 2016 and 2017, cost of goods sold has been adjusted uh, to, to use uh, FIFO. And so, of course, since cost of goods sold is lower, net income in each year is going to be higher. Again, we're ignoring any tax effects. We also have to recast the balance sheet. Uh, we have to report two years of balance sheets. Of course, 2018 is prepared under uh, FIFO all along, so there's no need to make any changes. Uh, but uh, for 2017, of course, we have to recast the inventory account balance, which affects total assets. And we have to recast retained earnings, which, which affects total liabilities and equity. Again, this is both of these are reflecting the $9,200 difference uh, between LIFO and FIFO on a cumulative basis. So let's talk about other types of accounting changes. There are changes in accounting estimates. And for that, we use a prospective approach, which basically means we just start applying the new, uh, the new estimate going forward. We do not restate or amend any prior years. If there's a change in reporting entity, we just have to disclose the nature of the change and any impacts on reported income because of you have to, once you learn about consolidations, you have to uh, account for any uh, inner subsidiary transactions and that may change some things. Uh, and then finally, you report the current year consolidated financial statements according to the current state of the company. All right, finally, then we have accounting errors. Errors can be minor or they can actually be quite significant. Uh, firms have to restate any affected periods from the error and disclose the nature of the error. It's not limited to what's presented to have to restate all affected periods. Similar to a change in accounting principle, the firm may require a journal entry to correct the prior mistake moving forward. There are two types of errors. There, one is called a counterbalancing error, and they correct themselves in one period. And so, in other words, as an example, an incorrect inventory count in 2017 is corrected with a correct inventory count in 2018. And so, basically, it would counterbalance itself, and so there'd be no need to make any adjusting entry because if we discover the error, let's say, in 2019, uh, then it would have already self-corrected it, self-corrected. However, non-counting counterbalancing errors do not correct themselves after one period. And so there could be a situation where the firm consistently miscounts inventory in transit year after year. And so that mistake would persist. And so there'd be, uh, there would be the need to make a journal entry no matter where the inventory error was discovered because it would not have corrected itself. All right, let's do an example. 49er company incorrectly calculated the fair value of a passive equity security in 2017. Sirius original cost was 32,000 and the firm reported a fair value of 33,500 but should have reported a fair value of 32,500 instead. And below is the income statement as was as it was originally reported in 2017. You notice that I uh, called out the unrealized holding gain or loss. Uh, dash income account separately just so we can analyze that and in this case we're also going to include income tax effects and so that becomes important as well and so now uh, they also had the balance sheet notice here I have the equity security account balance and the fair value adjustment and so those uh, and also a deferred tax liability all of those are separated out so that we can kind of see the effects from discovering this error all right so uh, let's uh, provide the correcting journal entry and the restated income statement and balance sheet for 2017. All right, so for the journal entry, first of all, the, we have to figure out what's the corrected fair value adjustment account balance. Well, the corrected amount is $500. The original balance that was reported was $1,500. Therefore, we need to adjust the fair value adjustment account by $1,000 with a credit entry. 
We also know that the deferred tax liability is going to be slightly incorrect, and we know that the deferred tax liability uh, captures the difference in the way that we account for uh, the security under U.S. GAAP compared to the Internal Revenue Code. With the Internal Revenue Code, we do not have fair value adjustments. And so in that case, um, the, the tax effect is going to be 40% of the fair value adjustment um, uh, difference as well. And so the corrected deferred tax liability should be uh, $200, which is 40% of the fair value adjustment account. Uh, and so that means we need, to for, we need to have a $400 debit entry to our deferred tax liability. We also then have to correct retained earnings. Uh, originally, it was reported as $147,200, uh, and that's the after-tax decrease to unrealized holding gain or loss. And so that means we need to then debit our retained earnings account $600. All right, so our correcting journal entry is a debit to both deferred tax liability and retained earnings, $400 and $600, and we credit our fair value adjustment account by $1,000. So then we have our corrected income statement. We can see that the unrealized holding gain or loss dash income, rather than being um, $1,500, is only $500, and the income tax expense then, of course, is the sort of the is also adjusted for the difference in income. Um, so $1,000 difference in income multiplied by 40% is $400, and so it's reduced to $3,800. And so our new net income, our corrected net income, is $5,700. Looking at the balance sheet, of course, the fair value adjustment account balance should be $500. We already talked about that the deferred tax liability account balance should be $200. And now the corrected retained earnings is $147,200. And of course, then our total assets and liabilities and equity are now restated for the corrected amounts.